you are in the middle of it. In fact, you said in Israel, you were looking out your window, and I guess bombs were going off, and people were rioting, or whatever was going on. Yeah, we uh, had the opportunity uh, right, right after they found the uh, three young men that were killed. Uh, oh. We were right there in the heart of Jerusalem, right in the middle of the rioting, and, oh. and it was just raw, raw nerve. I mean, uh, the heart of Israel uh, was hoping that those young men would be found alive, and uh, yeah. they weren't, and uh, that raw emotion went to the streets of Jerusalem, as well yeah. as other cities around the country. Is the beginning of the last day wars very, very possible. Very possible. And the reason I say that, because Iran is committed to becoming a nuclear power. I don't care about negotiations. Uh, right now, they're having negotiations with the P5 plus one. That's the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, the United States, Russia, uh, France, uh, and, uh, United Kingdom, and, uh, and uh, China. And uh, what's important right now with the, uh, uh, with the negotiations is it's not going to stop Iran to getting a nuclear weapon. They are committed to being finished. They are committed to completing a nuclear weapon. And that will put Israel at risk and the entire Middle East at risk because Iran is committed to controlling the Middle East. Hamas headline tries to hit Israeli nuclear reactor. Five million people under, now under rocket threat. At one time, one of the headlines just the last few days said 50% of all Israelis were in shelters at that moment. Well, it, it's exactly uh, right. Uh, the, the blessing has been uh, Israel has developed this uh, iron dome uh, that's been taking out a lot of the rockets out of the air. This, this iron dome is amazing. It, it really. is amazing. And I want to thank the creator of the Iron Dome for, for the work that God huh. gave to his brain. This is an amazing it's brilliant. weapon to shoot down. And how, how many do you think they're shooting down? Well, they're, they're shooting down about 90%. Now, it, if somebody's out there and they don't understand what the Iron Dome is, maybe and, someone and, hasn't uh, yeah, that's, uh, been watching the news. Like um, Iron do. Dome <laughs> is something that developed, uh, Israel developed in order to be able to shoot down rockets when they are fired from Gaza. So they have it so calibrated that they can determine as soon as that rocket is fired where it's going. And they have it determined if that's going to be an area of high population or an open field. If it goes to an open field, they let it fall. If it's going to an area of higher population, they attempt to take it out. And they've, they've had a 90% success uh, level, and the, the, the developer of the Iron Dome says, we can do even more with this. Wow. I mean, this is remarkable. And they are taking rocket. And, and I think today was the first death because of the, the rocket fire uh, since this began. I mean, it's been over, I think, 1,300 or so uh, rockets that have been fired. This is truly a miracle. And again, the United States funded this. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be blessed for this for many reasons. Yes. The concern is that one bomb would get through to a city or something. Well, that's, and, and, and also a, a, a payload. Fortunately, um, maybe for the lack of a better word, uh, these are rockets. They do damage when they fall. They're explosive. But there hasn't been any chemicals put in them. There hasn't been any nuclear material put in them. So um, that could be very dangerous. Iran, you said today to me, is a key. You want to hear that? Mine just came out. Mine just came. You know what that is? That's bombs dropping in Israel. Shell, go alerts. The, I have my phone set on alerts. I know every bomb that drops. And that's why this is my first time to hear it on my phone. I've heard it on your. I love Israel. Israel is God's place. Israel, Jerusalem is my home away from, well, it's my home. As soon as I arrive and they say, welcome home. For the first time in my life, I was home somewhere. Forgive me, but that this goes off every time a bomb, they're alert. There's people in Israel right now going to their shelters in these different, and, and, it, and it tells the different places 
Uh, yeah, this is Red, Red Alert Israel. Dude, it's, now, a, it's available on iPhones. Places. These are rockets that are falling on the state of Israel. And the beauty of this, I, almost a million people now have this app on their iPhone, and I've been reading it very closely, is the prayer of support from Christians that go on. They can respond to these alerts and encourage people through prayers and comments. And it's just beautiful to see how many Christians right now have this on their iPhone so they can pray, so they can pray to God to cover and protect the state of Israel uh, as these rockets fall. I mean, over, uh, I think it's over 1,300 rockets now have been shot at Israel. And fortunately, about 90% of the ones that have gone to the population centers of Israel have been knocked out of the air by the Iron Dome. I was watching Israeli television last night. It, it's so, I lived in the Bible through my prison years and I, it's all coming to pass. It's so real. It's, you, you read it and people say, oh, I don't want to read in the Revelation. I don't want to read Ezekiel. I don't want to read all this, but it's all real. It's so real and to see it, and, and on the Israeli television, uh, they were saying that basically they're surrounded by enemies. The enemies are, are on all sides right now. Let me put in this perspective, Jim. I was at a, at a media summit a couple of weeks ago in Jerusalem, and the IDF spokesperson uh, for uh, foreign news services gave us a briefing. Hezbollah has 100,000 rockets right now pointed at Israel. Oh. 100,000. And they are burying those rockets inside of homes. Uh, the, the spokesperson said that a lot of the homes are three stories. And in the mid-story of the homes is a rocket launcher. It's put into the home. So that's what Hamas does. That's what Hezbollah does. They bury themselves in, inside of these Civ, uh, communities. And Israel's doing everything they can. They drop flyers. They, they, they call, do robocalls and tell them, we're going to hit this area, uh, leave, evacuate. So the, Israel's doing everything they can to stop these rockets being fired on their people and are being decent about Never it. I've never heard of, of enemies telling each other that they're going to bomb a certain neighborhood or whatever, and, and to, to avoid killing any children, any mothers or whatever, you know, they, anybody. They are doing get, everything they can, Jim, absolutely. But they have to. Have to. They feel, Iran, you feel, is at the center of all, all of this. Yes, they, they were even bragging this week that these are rockets that they have provided. Some of these rockets are ro rockets that they have provided Hamas. Now, they're not going to live in peaceful coexistence with Israel. No. Iran. You, you believe that you could wake up tomorrow morning and hear that Israel has bombed Iran, and it won't surprise you. Can I say that? Uh, yes. Um. <laughs> we'll edit it out, by the way, if, you, if, I, did, no, if I said something wrong. But there are those live I, streaming. Yes, and, and, I, and yeah. I think that's important for people to understand that Israel has the right to defend themselves. And if they determine... A little teeny nation the size of what, New Jersey? And, yes. And if they determine tomorrow that they must do something, they're watching this very, very closely. They're giving the international community an opportunity to make peace with Iran on this nuclear uh, weapon program. Mm -hmm. So if Israel determines that the agreement... And Israel keeps warning. Prime Minister Netanyahu keeps warning... The international community, if you don't do enough, then this is going to create great problems for Middle Eastern countries, U.S. and world economy, and the state of Israel, and that Israel has the rights. Israel will have the right to do what's necessary to defend the country. And the other thing for those that support Israel and those that are friends of Israel and those that are, of us that pray for Israel Israel knows what to do. Israel right. has weapons that little, they, little Israel, little tiny Israel, that is blessed with a lot of intelligence, both intelligence on the ground and in brains. They're going to do what they can to leave a, a, a do what they have to to devastate and stop 
the nuclear risk of Iran, not only to Israel, but to many Sunni countries that are hoping Israel will do something for their sake. Mm -hmm. That's you know, our right. One of the scriptures, and I believe it could very well be talking about peace treaty scriptures. You know, a lot of times America acts like what's happening in the Middle East isn't a big deal. And we just say, well, let's, let's have another peace talk. Let's give up some more land. Let's see what we can do. You know, Jeremiah 8.11 says this, they dressed the wound of my people, Israel, as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Ezekiel 13.10 says this, because they lead my people astray, saying peace, when there is no peace. And, you know, I love it this week that Benjamin Netanyahu is being very bold, and he's actually calling some of our leadership naive. They're talking about peace talks and, and how to coexist with these people. You can't coexist with people that want to kill you. You can't. It's, it's impossible. You can't do that. What would the United States do? What would you do if 80% of our country was having bombs dropped on it right now, would you expect our leaders to defend us? Yes. But we don't expect Israel to defend itself. Isn't that right? I mean, a lot of naivety is going on over this, and it's, it's, it's lopsided. Well, there's a pattern here. Is uh, the rockets start falling, Israel responds, then the United States and the international community says Israel has the rights to defend themselves. Then Israel starts defending themselves with force. And then all of a sudden, the international community starts calling for a ceasefire agreement. And Israel, after a while, feels forced to, to cut a deal with Hamas. This has happened two previous times. What has happened in between each time is the rockets that Hamas is getting has more distance, more range, and putting more people at risk. And then you have Iran bo uh, bo uh, boasting this week of the fact that they're providing these Syrian weapons yes. to Hamas. So the big concern, okay, fine, Israel cuts another ceasefire deal. Well, what are the rockets and missiles going to be like next time? And that's the big concern. The good news is Al-Sisi, the president of Egypt, has shut the border with Gaza so the rockets are not getting in there like they were. And he is not a friend of Hamas. And he, uh, Hamas is an old Muslim Brotherhood entity. So uh, the fact is, and I think that's what's more important than any, anything else, Jim, is you've got a pattern of these, you know, rockets ceasefire, rockets ceasefire, rockets ceasefire. Eventually, and I think where, that's where Israel is right now, we must eliminate Hamas's infrastructure inside of Gaza and inside of Judea and Samaria. This week, Hamas spokesman says all Israelis have now become legitimate targets. The, the reason it's so important, and I was mentioning your book, this book should be in the hands of every American to understand God's heart is with Jerusalem. God's heart is with Israel. It's God's land. 